Hello students, myself Shomrat Paul. I am going to explain a topic on inverter. It's a very important topic which can convert DC into AC. The output voltage can be fixed or variable. Similarly, the frequency of output voltage also can be fixed or variable. So we can say in case of the inverter circuit, the input terminal we are applying the DC source which is having the constant magnitude and after inverting operation which will provide us that is the output AC with variable voltage along with the variable frequency. This is the actually the operation for the inverter. Now we should know the application purpose for industry as well as the category of the inverter which is used for industry. First go to the application purpose. See here the several types of application have mentioned that is variable speed induction motor that is adjustable speed AC drive that is induction heating that is uninterruptible power supply or UPS standby power supply HVDC power transmission, variable voltage and variable frequency power supply, battery operated vehicle is a very important application for nowadays because the people are ever for the implement the electric vehicle. And now for the classification, the inverter can be classified in several ways like depending on the input source commutation circuit, circuit configuration and on the output voltage waveforms. So depending on the input source that it can be classified by the two ways that is current source inverter CSI and voltage source inverter VSI. And depending on the commutation technique on switch off technique it can be classified in four categories that is line commutated inverter force commutated inverter, auxiliary commutated inverter and complementary commutated inverter and depending on the circuit configuration it can be again classified in the three categories that is series inverter, parallel inverter, hub bridge inverter and full bridge inverter and depending on the output waveform the shape of the output waveform it can be again classified by two categories that is square wave inverter and pulse width modulation inverter is a very important part for industry purpose that is pulse width modulated inverter. Anyways, so today we are going to discuss about the voltage source inverter for a single phase and a later discussion that will be for the three phase. So first we are go through the circuit for single phase hub bridge inverter or voltage source inverter with R load. This is a circuit diagram is given over here in which we are using two DC link voltage and which are having equal magnitude Vs by 2. And two switches are connected in this manner through the load and load is connected just the mid hub of the DC link voltage. And here we consider that is a R load and diode D1 and D2 which is called actually feedback diode during RL or RLE operation but in this case for R operation maybe the diode will not be conducted for any more operation okay and as we know it is uh, it can convert AC in terms of DC that means output voltage should be periodical in nature okay that means we consider the two mode operation mode 1 and mode 2 and we have taken the equal time duration mode 1 and for mode 2 that is 0 to t by 2 and t by 2 to t. That means we are assuming it is a half cycle for the positive one and the next half cycle for the negative one. So consider the two mode operation first. In case of mode 1 operation see when the switch S1 starts conducting means when we are applying the triggering pulse across the gate then the current starts flowing from source to load in this way okay that means what the current direction is your 
right hand side to left hand side which is given in this circuit okay and after t by 2 when we are applying the triggering pulse during t by 2 to t then what happened then the switch s1 should be in on state sorry off state and s2 becomes on then what happened then the current starts flowing from this direction source to load and coming back to the supply that means what if we consider the both mode operation in the first case the current was flowing this direction in the next case the current starts flowing in this direction that means the current direction is opposite for two mode operation as well as the voltage appearing across the load for the first case first mode operation it was positive negative in this case it is positive negative that means it will provide the periodic signal duration of 0 to t by 2 and t by 2 to t which will be further reflected on the waveform of output voltage considering the two mode operation c in this waveform when we apply ig1 to the switch s1 then the s1 starts conducting then the output voltage will follow the input voltage that is suppose vs by 2 this one after that at the point of t by 2 s1 stop conducting and s2 starts conducting that means we are giving the triggering pulse across uh, triggering triggering uh, current that is ig2 to the s2 then the s2 starts conducting and the voltage appearing across in this region to just in reverse direction that means when t1 starts conducting then the voltage appears this one when the t2 starts conducting then the voltage appears to the load is this one as well as as it is a resistive load that means the current and voltage both will be in the same direction and the same phasor that is why current waveform will follow the voltage waveform that is why it will provide that is uh, sorry it can provide a periodical signal like ac signal that is why we can say the fixed dc which will be converted in periodical signal or ac so this is the operation principle for the hub bridge inverter okay <coughs> and here one more thing diode d1 and d2 are not conducting as we are applying the only the resistive load here that is why no need to require the feedback path during discharging of inductor or back emf that is why due to presence of the r load diode d1 and d2 is not conducting that means during okay so this is the waveform and the operation for the single phase half bridge inverter now we are going to calculate the RMS value as the output voltage is that is sinusoidal or uh, periodic signal as well as how we can represent the periodic signal by equations. I think it's known by everyone, the every student that is which can be represented by the Fourier series. So first before going into the equation we should know what is Fourier series. So I'm I'm giving the little bit idea for Fourier series. See, in Fourier series, that is, or the Fourier transform, what means that is, that states that the periodic signal VOT that is actually coming out from any kind of the converter can be described by a constant term, which is defined by VOs A0 by 2 plus an infinite series of sine and cosine term of the frequency n omega where n is the any integer or which define the nth harmonic because of suppose we are getting a periodic signal suppose in this way that means it can cover the nth number of harmonic will be there that is why the equation for the Fourier transform which will give you that is v0t equal to a0 by 2 plus integration of n equal to 1 2 3 2 in infinity is a periodic signal and a n cos n omega t plus b n sin n omega t okay so in where the coefficient a0 is defined by this which is called actually the average value of the output voltage and which is defined by this expression that is 2 by t integration of 0 to 2 
v0 t dt it is suppose in case of the x axis is defined in by the t or time and it can be again represents by the omega t axis when we assume the x axis defined by omega t then then we can replace the term that is t by pi 2 pi then the equation will stands for 1 by pi 0 to 2 pi v0 omega t d omega t similarly we can again write the expression for the coefficient a that is a n equal to 2 by t integration of 0 to t v0 t cos n omega t dt and accordingly if we can change the time by omega t or 2 pi then we can say it is 1 by pi integration of 0 to 2 pi v0 omega t cos n omega t or d omega t and similarly we can say the expression the coefficient of bn that is equal to 2 by t integration of 0 to t v0 t sin n omega t dt that is equal to 1 by pi integration of 0 to 2 pi v0 omega t sin n omega t that means as we are going to calculate the or form the equation of the periodic signal that is why we should know that is a Fourier series okay now suppose we, we are having some output from any kind of any kind of inverter and which will give you the form of like this one suppose this is the any kind of inverter output it can be possible for any kind of operation so that means what we can we can say that this positive part is a first harmonic it is just similar to the negative part also similarly for the next case this positive part is similar to this one and again it will be going to the next cycle onward so we can say this is called the half wave symmetry if we consider this axis is defined by the total time taken or total cycle t then it must be equal to t by 2 and it must be equal to t that means 0 to t by 2 and t by 2 to t the waveform are similar to each other that is why we can say this is called the half wave symmetry okay so if any signal we will we will get suppose from any inverter operation then what will be the expression then normally we can say for inverter operation or half wave symmetry operation then then i a0 and an it must be equal to 0 that means we can say for half wave symmetry a0 equal to an equal to 0 that means what that means we can say we are taking only the odd harmonics means first means third means five and in this way we can we can get only the odd harmonics during half wave symmetry as the first harmonic and the second harmonic which is defined by the negative negative half cycle that are the both in mag that the means area of the both harmonics are same that is why we can only take the odd harmonics that is why if we consider this is the actual uh, consideration for half wave symmetry then the actual Fourier series defined by what then the Fourier series is defined by that means we can say a0 is 0 means this part is 0 right a n is 0 this part is 0 so ultimately we will get the actual expression during inverter operation when the output voltage is half wave symmetry then we can write the expression v0 t equal to b sorry equal to summation equal to summation of n equal to only the odd harmonic means 1 3 5 dot 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 to infinity that is b n sin n omega t sorry that is n as it is the nth harmonic n omega t so this is the expression for half wave symmetry and which is having the inverter output okay so this is all about for the calculation part so we can implement this uh, means uh, we can say the periodic signal which is coming out from the inverter then we can calculate first the rms value then the periodic signal can be defined so first go to the rms value so from the so from the circuit diagram and the waveform we can easily say the first peak means the 
first one that is confined by the region of pi that is t by 2 that means we can say the time that is 1 by t by 2 integration of the confined part that is 0 to t by 2 and the output voltage equation if it is defined by v0 that can be changed that that is v0 square t dt that means it is the it is called the rms value we have taken the root mean square term the output voltage then after simplification we will get the this result that means 2 by t integration of 0 to t by 2 v0 t v square t dt then after integrating then we can consider the output voltage that should be followed by the input voltage that is why v0 can be changed by term of vs by 2 as we have given the receiving voltage which is having the same magnitude that is vs by 2 that is output voltage is vs by 2 we can replace the term from this equation into this equation then we can integrating this part ultimately we will get the result that is 2 by t into vs by 2 whole square into t by 2 that means this part this part will be cancelled by each other ultimately the rms value we will get that is v o rms equal to v s by 2 okay this is the rms value now see now we are going to represent the total means the periodic signal by using the fourier equations so as the periodic function that is why we can know the Fourier expression just I have told people V0 T equal to A0 by 2 plus summation of N equal 1, 2, 3 alpha A N sin omega T plus B N, B N sin N omega T. And for half wave symmetry that means from the waveform that is similar to each other that is why we can rewrite the expression that is V0 T equal to summation of N equal to 1, 3, 5 means we are taking the odd harmonics only to infinity and <coughs> Bn sin n omega 2 as I told you before for half wave symmetry A0 equal to An equal to 0. So now we are going to calculate the this, this uh, coefficient Bn that is in terms of omega t axis we can say we can replace t by 2 omega that means we will get that is 2 by pi sorry we can replace by 2 pi so we will get the result that is 2 by pi integrating of the 0 to pi v 0 omega t sin omega t <coughs> sin omega t and uh, sorry one minute sin n omega t d omega t so after simplification, we will get the result that is 2 by pi. Okay, we can put the value of the output voltage Vs by 2, Vs by 2, and the remaining parts are same, right? So after simplification, we will get the result that is 2 by pi Vs by 2 integrating of 0 to pi sin n omega t. We know sin omega t is integrating part is minus cos n omega t and n is there that is 1 by n term is there. So we can rewrite the expression like in this way and after satisfying the limit means the upper limit is pi and the lower limit is 0 that means we can satisfy the limit so the expression will be that is Vs by n pi cos 0 minus cos n pi. Very interesting part as we consider the odd harmonics that means n should be 1 3 or 5 that is why if we can apply this the integer value that means cos pi cos 3 pi cos 5 pi which will always give you minus 1 so we can write the expression vs by n pi 1 minus minus of 1 that is why we will get the result that is Bn equal to 2 Vs by n pi. So this is the 
coefficient. So we can now we can uh, we know the final equation. We can satisfy this value to the final equation for the periodic signal that is reflected here. C. That means we know for the Fourier series we will get that is v zero t equal to in summation of n equal to one three five to infinity. That is two v s. To the coefficient b that is 2 v s by n pi sin um n omega t so we can put the value from taken from the coefficient b and set that will be equal to 0 for all the even harmonics right that is 2 4 0 means cos 0 means cos 2 pi or cos 4 pi or cos 6 pi which will give you 0 so that is the result is 0 right now so the actual expression that is i zero t that is as we are using the resistive load r that is equal to v by r. So similarly we can say that is two v s by n pi means two v s by n pi r for resistive load. So this is the expression for the output current. Okay. So this is all about for the resistive load. Now go through the inductive load. Now the diode D1 and D2 is very important to conduct during the operation. Now see the similar circuit we consider here. The similar descending voltage having the same magnitudes and here we are represent R by RL or inductive load is there. That means we consider here the four mode operation because that is four mode operation that is mode 1, mode 2, mode 3 and mode 4 operation. What happened? See, in this case, when during mode 1 operation, consider it will start from 0 to T, sorry, it will start from T1 to T by 2, it will, and mode 2 is T by 2 to another point T2, mode 3, T2 to T, and mode 4, that is T2, S1 is on. As we know, here the inductive part is there then when the inductor starts storing energy the direction of the current and when the inductor starts discharging act to the diode then the maybe the direction of the current remaining same but the polarity of the voltage can be changed that is why we have taken the four four mode operation for a complete cycle 0 to 2 0 to t okay that is why 0 to t we have taken the four mode operation okay when D1, S1, D2, S2 will be conducted accordingly. Now, in case of the first mode operation, mode 1 operation, when the switch S1 starts conducting, then the current is flowing in this path, okay, during T1 to T by 2, okay. When the mode 2 operation starts, that means in this particular case, in the first mode operation, then the inductor will store energy, Okay, in this way, it has the polarity during energy storing, it was positive and negative. When the inductor try to discharge, it has changed its polarity, right? Then it will be positive, it will be negative. Then the inductor starts discharging in the mode 2 operation. Then the diode D2 starts conducting. Now we can use the diode. So it will cover two mode operation. Similarly, for mode three operation, suppose after time t two, where the t one in case in where in the in the second mode operation where the where the mode operation was stopped at the point of t two, then the third mode operation will start from t two. Then the current starts flowing when the s two starts conducting. Then the current starts flowing in this direction, which is reflected here. Then the inductor polarity is, this will be positive, this will be negative. Okay, when the inductor is fully charged, try to discharge, then it will cover the four mode operation or mode four operation. Then the inductor try to discharge through the diode D1. That is why it's reflected in this circuit. That means by considering this four mode operation during presence of the RL load, C, the first mode operation is considered when the S1 starts conducting. So we will take the point T1. Okay. It can be continue. That is T1 to T by 2. So this is the S S1 was conducted. Right. Okay. Now see in the second case when the mode 2 starts it will conducted from T2 to T2. T2 
by 2 to t2 that means when d1 was conducted and mode 3 operation that means when t2 then the t then the switch s1 was on and after this mode operation the diode starts conducting during <coughs> t2 s1 means again we are giving the next triggering pulse up to this point then the diode was conducting so at this mode operation c in the first mode operation okay when the s1 is on then the voltage this is the gate pulse is given here that is the switches for this is the switch s1 and this is the gate pulse for switch s2 anyways so now go to the output voltage waveform when s1 starts conducting in this particular region then what happened the output voltage is vs by 2 then the inductor starts energy stored inside it then the current is gradually increases right when the s1 stops conducting the inductor try to discharge through the diode d2 that is why the current is gradually decreases at this point okay as well as at this point right similarly when t2 s2 starts conducting again the inductor starts storing energy but in opposite direction first direction was that is in this direction now the direction has changed across inductor this that is why it will store energy in the opposite direction and again the inductor starts discharging through diode d1 through this direction so this is the all that means it will cover the complete cycle and the next cycle will be repeated in this similar way now go to the so this is all about for the output current okay see the output current is almost like a sinusoidal wave or the periodic signal is there that means we can say the dc is converted in terms of ac that is normal the inverter operation okay now think about this the output voltage see during this point means d1 to d1 conducted and s1 conducted in the both classes in the both operation means when s1 conducted c and d1 conducted means s1 was conducted in this way and d1 was conducted c in this way right d1 is this one in the both cases see the current this is the voltage appearing across load are same okay okay i repeat once both cases when s1 starts try to conduct and d1 try to conduct in the both case the supply voltage appearing across the load are remaining same that is why during this t by 0 to t by 2 operation the voltage is positive and again when d2 starts conducting and s2 starts conducting when d2 starts conducting means this one and s2 starts conducting in the both case c the voltage is appearing in the negative direction that is why it will provide you the negative peaks in this way similarly again it can provide a alternating behavior of the output voltage that is the inverter operation similarly from this from this operation we can easily identify in the voltage equation that is symmetrical in nature nature that means the this harmonic and this harmonic both are symmetrical to each other so we can have the only the odd harmonics and as the symmetrical harmonics is there that is symmetrical waveform is there then we can calculate through the fourier series for periodic function then by this this one the periodic function as we have calculated in the previous uh, waveform for half bridge rectifier then we have got the result that is vs by the i0 was that is vs one minute so so we can calculate it uh, through the previous manner and the vs was what the vs was that is 2 vs right by n pi we have got the result so similar operation is there as a symmetrical waveform is there that is why again we will get we we can write the expression that is v0 t it must be equal to the summation of n equal to 1 3 5 or the all the odd harmonics right uh, up to in up to infinity sorry up to infinity and 2 vs by 
in by as we know the result output voltage in case of the half convert uh, sorry half converter circuit or half inverter circuit similarly we can write the expression for the current expression in case of the fourier series that will be equal to 2 vs by r in the previous case and write as we as we using the rl load so it will give you what so it will give you that is v s 2 vs sorry the output would 2 vs by xl and xl means sorry 2 vs by z sorry sorry it's my mistake that is 2 vs by z z and as we are using the rl load that means it will give you the z equal to root over of that is r square plus n omega l whole square okay that i have defined the current expression in this way that is vs that is summation of n equal to 1 3 5 to infinity and the expression is 2 vs by n pi root over of r square plus n omega l whole square sin n omega l minus phi so what is this one as we are using the inductive load that is why output current should be lagging in nature with respect to voltage that is why we should taken care of this matter minus phi by phi n minus phi n as we know with respect to voltage for inductive current that should be lagging in nature suppose it is defined by phi n so we can change the expression here that is sin n omega t minus phi n okay so this is all about for the hub bridge and full bridge inverter operation sorry hub bridge inverter operation for the purpose of r load and rl load